I think back to my dad's last years. Uh, he died October 20th, 1988, just shy of his 88th birthday. Yeah. And he continued to be interested, you know, very much interested in what was going on at the centers. And I hear a lot of discussion going on now about what are the future challenges oh, to yeah. the centers. Oh, and yeah. he, had, he had three things that he saw as long-term concerns. The first was uh, where would they get the right kind of director generals and who were they? Uh, initially, of course, the first several were Americans. Most of them have been at least Western trained. In some of his conversations with the staff, uh, Asian, American, and every other nationality, there was a feeling that at least the next director general at the time he was part of the selection process probably should be another Westerner. But he envisioned the need for the right kind of men or women to head up a growing number of institutes. And he was concerned about where they were going to come from. The second thing he was concerned about was political pressure. He, he saw a couple of institutes being created in areas and in subject matters where he felt the return on the investment would be very low and that they were created because that part of the geographic region said, we've got to have one and that they would not stay focused. And the third was the lack of the, how do you keep the kind of focus you had when you had one of each kind and a director general out in the field as you grew bigger and became more, spread out more thinly and became more bureaucratic. He had a lifetime horror of bureaucracy and what it could do to stop progress. This is uh, when he was made a fellow of the American Farm Economics Association in 1966. This is the last paragraph. Professor Hill was best known among graduate students for his colorful metaphors his ability to anticipate questions and even to formulate an answer almost before a question was completed. <laughs> he is best at his best in informal discussions, talking with Frosty Hill as a stimulating to colleagues as to graduate students because of his quick mind, enthusiasm, and sense of humor. He combines an unusually an unusual degree of keen analytical mind with the colloquial expressions, common sense, and pragmatism characteristic of the American frontier.